Robin is here to show us how to use Power Apps, ChatGPT, and JSON to generate the time, stories, and more. Robin, take it away. I actually have to unmute myself. Uh, perfect. Thank you, David, and thank you, Greg. Awesome demonstration, a formula that I uh, love to use, and, and the JSON part in the end matches perfectly to uh, to the next part, to what I'm going to tell you, um, because we're going to talk about Power Platform, JetGPT, and JSON, and also a little bit about the past JSON function in Power Apps and Power Automate. So we are all warmed up for that. So first of all, a few words about me. I'm Robin. I'm a low-code enabler at NBW, which is a southern German energy company you have probably never heard about. Um, I still have no clue about AI, what doesn't mean um, that I can talk about it or use it in my apps because it's so easy in Power Apps to, to do that. This is my Twitter handle and I also have a small YouTube channel you can check out if you want to learn more about those topics or some front end considerations in Power Apps, Canvas Apps. I also am a Biz Apps MVP since the beginning of this year. And just as Greg, no, we didn't talk about it before. I'm gonna talk about, uh, uh, yeah, we start with pictures of our kids. So this is my son. And uh, like you saw in the subtitle and the title, uh, we're gonna uh, do a Bedtime Stories app. And the Bedtime Stories app is for Pete, my son. This was the moment that he got infected. Um, let's see what that makes with him in the coming years. He likes running around, telling me that he's awake at 5 a.m. I think Craig can relate there. Um, screaming, fighting with his sister. He also tells me from time to time that I'm sweet, what is really sweet. And he loves a good bedtime story every night. But there is a problem. He doesn't only like one bedtime story. When I, the first bedtime story that I came up with is over, he goes like this. Another one, another one, another one, another one. And then my creativity comes to an end and this is where technology has to kick in. And that is where I built this solution for the, you might uh, have seen this before because Daniel Laskowitz and me, uh, we presented this as well at the Power Platform AI Hackathon. And uh, this is the solution that I came up with. So a quick video, how that works. First of all, you can create a hero for your bedtime story. Today's hero will be based on Christmas. So we get Jolly Jingle, the head elf, of the North Pole of Santa's workshop. And then we can select this, uh, the hero and create a fresh new story. And in a few seconds, this works on my mobile phone. And I actually use this app um, every second night to tell him some bad night stories when I bring him to bed. Uh, but we want to take one step back. And today I actually want to talk about the hero creation process, because all of that is done with one single prompt. But normally when you type something into ChatGPT, you get a string out. So this is normally what we see when we type something into ChatGPT. So this is um, basically the prompt a little bit different that I used um, in, the, in the Canvas app. And then we get an answer that looks like this. All the information that you just saw on the Canvas app screen is somewhere in there, but not in a structured way. So how can we get the things out of this text and put it uh, in a structured way on our Canvas screen or store the hero then what I did afterwards, I stored in Dataverse. So store the hero then in Dataverse. How does that work? And we, we saw the video that was in real time. So it's actually really, really fast. It's just one call to the ChatGPT API. So what is the twist? Of course, you can read and I already talked about it. Craig already talked about it. We take the same prompt and then we add one little sentence. Answer as a JSON object. ChatGPT speaks so many languages. It speaks so many programming languages. It even speaks emoji if you want to. So of course, this thing can talk in JSON as well. And the answer that we get here is something like this. And then, of course, it's much, much easier to get this on a Canvas Apps screen in a structured way. And let's look really quickly at the Power Apps code. Um, 
what is really, really important if you use that as well, provide a sample object so it gets predictable which attributes, which properties we have in this object. So I tell it uh, up here what I want from it. And then again, I reinforce it by I want the name, I want the home, which, uh, and I want the age. This is an integer because there are no, uh, no double quotes around it. And then I don't want this. Um, this is the markdown that is used that we have those nice code blocks in ChatGPT. I don't want that from the API, so I tell it to them. And then we can, just as Greg showed us, we can use the pass JSON function in here, and we can be sure that there's a name, uh, a name property in there because we specifically asked for it. And that works like 99% of the time really, really well. Um, in the beginning, I was uh, saying we will add some business value. So the bedtime stories for me, it's a lot of business value because it makes my evenings easier and my son happy. But uh, let's get to another example. And this time we're going to do it in a live demo. Where is the business value? Demo time. So who is the busiest man right now on the planet? Probably Santa Claus. And Santa Claus gets a lot of wish lists at the moment, and all are in different formats. And of course, we need to have itemized lists for different reasons. Because, um, first of all, I'm the reindeer in here, and Rudolph can't pull everything, so you can't overload the sled. Also, inflation really kicked in over the last year. So we have to look at the budget a little bit. Um, so we need to have an idea what all those items cost and how big they are. So the yeah, so we can pack everything in the sleigh and then the logistics to bring everything to the different countries. And I got a hold of Craig's Christmas wish list. Um, and we will put that in the forms in here. So Craig White from somewhere around Manchester, I don't actually know, um, in the UK and his Christmas wish list consists of Lego, Formula One and Ben and Jerry's ice cream. So while we submit this and wait till it's processed, we're going to look really quickly at the flow, how everything is built. So we just triggered everything when a new response is submitted. Everyone who worked with forms in Power Automate already knows second step. We have to get the actual response details where all the strings that we just saw are included. And then we store everything in Dataverse. So we make a new contact, which is Craig White right now uh, from Manchester, UK. And then the magic happens. This is where we use ChatGPT in here. And this is the prompt. Looks a little bit different in the in the new editor than in Canvas apps, but basically the same. I'm strictly telling you, it's an API that just answers in JSON. And down here is again the JSON object that I want to have. And right now I want an itemized list, so I want an array of items of the wish list. Again, here's an example, just how I want it. And of course, in Power Automate for much longer, we had the pass JSON functionality. We're going to use uh, here again in for uh, for me, it's much easier actually in Power Automate to work with the pass JSON object. It's uh, yeah much more straightforward. And then for every wishlist item, we just bring everything into Dataverse. And let's see if that worked. Of course, Santa has its own model driven app and we see Craig White in here and these information. So which category it falls into, if there is more or less educational value, the estimated price, size and weight. This is all from the LLM. So JetGPT made an estimate in here that wasn't in the uh, in the wish list itself. But we can then look here and Santa can decide which present he will bring to Greg if he was uh, a nice kid last year and which he doesn't, of course, also looking at the budget and the weight of the items. Um, yeah, and that was my second demo. Of course, probably you are not Santa Claus, so not that much business value for you, but you hope you can transfer that. I 
but I hope you can transfer that knowledge to your own apps. For example, the Power Automate stuff. If you get a customer service email or just email from, from a customer and you need to extract data from there or to automatically write it to a database, this is the functionality to use. And this is not something that I came up with but uh, many, many people do that kind of stuff with the JetGPT and the other LLMs, I think under the hood in Copilot, this stuff is used all the time. So bring it to your apps and flows as well. Um, quickly, the links, uh, what I wanted to talk about for my last slide is if you like the design of the, um, of the Bedtime Stories app, Luis and me, we made a design toolkit. You can find it in the in the first link. The second one is if you want to get started with JetGPT in Power Apps, Canvas Apps. Um, I made a recording with April and Jocelyn. Um, you can look that up in here. And as I told earlier, I did a recording with Daniel about Azure OpenAI. So of course you can also use that inside your Canvas Apps and Flows. And you can actually also download the whole Bedtime Stories app. And if you want to send in a wish list, I will paste that link in the chat in a second. So you can send me a wish list and I can do some picture updates. And yeah, and with that, I come to an end of my presentation. And David also reached in, uh, reached out with a wish list to Santa Claus. David, is this your wish list? Movies, <laughs> ice hockey? Wait. Now I know games. why you asked uh, some interests. Yes, I like all those things. That is very, very cool. Yeah, <laughs> AI has been uh, stalking me, I guess. Yes, <laughs> very, very cool. Excellent. Thank you, Robin. And so also everybody just think about like uh, the practical applications of this is very, very valuable when you think about like team building. So get creative with what Robin is showing off because you absolutely could utilize this in a corporate environment. You could get to know each, uh, each other on your team a little bit better by doing some of these fun things that provide a little bit more chemistry. And then guess what? You're going to work better together as you start building software and solutions. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be a good opportunity to learn as well. So thank you, Robin, for sharing that great, great job to everybody involved. Thank you.